Hello and welcome to Headline News in Neuroendocrine Tumors, or NET. I'm Steve Highsmith. All through 2011, OncoView.tv has brought you up-to-date coverage of the latest abstracts presented at global Neuroendocrine Tumor Society meetings. Today, we will highlight several abstracts presented at the ECHO ESMO European Multidisciplinary Cancer Congress held in Stockholm, Sweden from the 23rd to 27th of September 2011. We spoke with Dr. Ashley Grossman, who reported on the effect of Everolimus plus octreotide LAR in patients with advanced lung neuroendocrine tumors. This was an analysis from the Radiant 2 trial. Thank you, Dr. Grossman, for taking the time to speak with us today. Please tell our audience what you saw as some of the highlights for NETS at ESMO 2011. Hi, Steve. Yes, it was an interesting meeting, but one of the things I think that came out of it was the new treatment for lung neuroendocrine tumors particularly the use of Everolimus. You were an author on the ESMO poster by Fazio et al., which reports on a subset analysis for patients with lung net from the Radiant 2 trial. Will you briefly describe, please, the Radiant 2 trial and the key findings from this analysis? Surely, the Radiant 2 trial, which in parallel with the Radiant 3 trial, I think amongst the most important and certainly amongst the largest trials ever carried out on neuroendocrine tumors. Now, the Radiant 2 trial was specifically in non-pancreatic neuroendocrine tumors. Altogether, the attention to treat population was 429, which was absolutely massive, and included all types of non-pancreatic neuroendocrine tumors. But most of these were gastrointestinal, and the data on these has previously been presented. But these were all amalgamated, and I think what's more interesting is now looking at the subset a group of 44 patients who had lung neuroendocrine tumors. Now, these were all randomly assigned to treatment either with best supportive therapy or with Everolimus. Both of them got octreotide as well. So we could look very specifically at whether Everolimus can alter the progression-free survival in these patients. Dr. Grossman, why was it important to look at effects of Everolimus plus octreotide in the lung net patient subset? I think it was very important in this instance to look at the, the subgroup because many people have thought that uh, lung neuroendocrine tumors, or classically called bronchial carcinoids, really have not had any very effective therapy after surgical removal. That's the first point. And secondly, one always wondered whether their response to therapy might be different to other of the more classic neuroendocrine tumors coming from the gut, like the pancreatic or the midgut carcinoids. So it was really very useful to then dig down into that data set, look specifically just at the lung neuroendocrine tumors, and see whether the changes we'd seen overall in the group were also seen in the same subgroup. Now, in this subgroup, as I said, there were 44 patients. Just by chance, it was slightly unbalanced insofar as 33 received the Everolimus plus octreotide and only 11 the placebo arm. And in addition, the baseline characteristics of those receiving Everolimus were in general, if you like, one would expect a slightly worse prognosis. They were generally older, they were diagnosed rather earlier, uh, their biochemistry was worse with higher chromogranin and higher 5-HIAs. But the interesting outcome, in spite of the fact that the Everolimus did start off with worse characteristics, was that the progression-free survival for those receiving Everolimus was 13.6 months, compared to the placebo, which was 5.59 months. Now, this was not actually statistically significant, presumably because the groups are actually quite small. But I would emphasize that the ones receiving Everolimus started off with a more deleterious state, and this change in progression-free survival of around about seven to eight months was very similar, if not slightly greater, than that seen in the overall group of 429 patients. So I think what one can conclude from this is that the effect of Everolimus in producing disease stabilization appears to apply to lung nets as much as to any of the other neuroendocrine tumors. And really, that's very encouraging because, to reiterate, until now, we really have had no effective treatment, no treatment which has been validated 
for lung neuroendocrine tumors which have recurred after surgery. Finally, Dr. Rosman, what are the clinical implications of these findings? I think in terms of clinical indications, not only was progression-free survival extended, but if you actually look at the degree of tumor shrinkage in the overall population, you saw 75% with Everolimus and 45% with placebo. Now, these percentages were very similar for the lung nets, 67 versus 27%, in fact, even greater in some ways. So I think you're seeing disease stabilization and disease shrinkage in this group as you are for other neuroendocrine tumors. So that means I think generally one can extrapolate that a drug like Everolimus is going to be effective against all classes of neuroendocrine tumor. And clinically, that becomes extremely important because if you have a patient with, say, a typical lung carcinoid, the overall survival of those is really very good, 80 to 90% plus at 10 years. But once they start becoming progressive, particularly the atypical carcinoids, the long-term survival begins diminishing. So once these tumors recur, clinicians are really facing a very awkward situation as to what to do next. We know they're not very radiosensitive. We know that standard chemotherapy is not particularly effective and has never really been validated in this group. But now we actually have a treatment which we know or is highly suggestive can slow progression, possibly cause tumor shrinkage and extend progression-free survival. And as I said, although it's extremely difficult to collect and collect large groups of patients with this disease, and this was a subset of a much larger study, I think the findings are very suggestive that one can certainly start to consider Everolimus for patients with progressive disease. And you know, quite frankly, one doesn't really have very many therapeutic options in this group of patients. So I think it's really quite exciting that for the first time we have at least a suggestion of a novel targeted treatment for our patients. Dr. Grossman, thank you for joining us today. Well, thank you very much, Steve, for allowing me this opportunity to discuss what I think are really very exciting new findings. Dr. Ashley Grossman discussing the effect of Everolimus plus octreotide LAR in patients with advanced lung neuroendocrine tumors. We thank all of the experts who participated in this edition of Headline News in Nets. I'm Steve Highsmith. Be sure to watch coverage on the latest news in Nets right here on OncuView.tv.